If you were to ask me the question, Brett, what is one of the biggest technological advances that you've seen in your day? I would have to say the transition from using a 56K modem, going to broadband, and now using the Wi-Fi fiber connections that we have today is definitely the best thing that I have seen in my lifetime. Now, I love wireless internet. I love that I can just have a router plugged right in here into my modem, and then it broadcasts a signal throughout my home so any of my devices can instantly connect to that. Now, using the Wi-Fi or the wireless network is not always the best option. Even though it's so easy to use, you are not able to get as fast as speeds if you are plugged directly into the router. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can add a switch to your router so that you can then plug in devices so that you have a direct connection to the internet. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So let me show you my network room. So there's a lot going on here, but let me simplify it a bit so you know what is happening. So first we have the internet that is coming into the home. Now for me, I am using a coaxial internet connection. So right here, this is the modem that is receiving the internet. So the internet comes in through this coaxial line, it plugs into here, and then it gives me the internet into the home. Now, it does have a Wi-Fi router built into this, but I like to use my own Wi-Fi router. So what I've done is this blue cable is then plugged in and it is taking the internet to here, which is my Nest Wi-Fi. So here on the bottom, you can see the blue cable is plugged into here. So it's then giving internet to my Wi-Fi router and then I can control this and this broadcasts the internet throughout my whole home. So I have another Wi-Fi point upstairs that meshes with this. So then I can simply find my Wi-Fi SSID or my Wi-Fi name, type in my password, and then those devices can connect directly to this. But now I want to add some devices by plugging them in to my router. Well, one of the biggest issues with the new types of Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi points is on the bottom, there's only an in port for the internet and one out port. So if you had a laptop, you could plug the laptop directly into here and it's gonna get as good of connection as possible because it's pretty much tied directly in to the router and tied into the modem. But if you're like me, and you have all of these different devices, is what you wanna do is you want to plug in something that other devices can connect to. So here I have plugged into the Nest Wi-Fi. This cable goes into here which is called a switch. So then the cable comes down here and it comes around and it comes through and is plugged in right here on the first port of the switch. So is what the switch allows you to do is now plug in any devices because the switch is going to put the internet through all of these different ports and then they can all be directly connected to the internet. So that's the simplest way to explain how that works. And now you can then plug in devices that require an ethernet connection. So here I have a Philips Hue hub. It is required to be plugged in. So it is plugged from here right into here. Next, I'm using a Lutron Caseta uh, wireless hub. It's plugged in, here's the white cable here, and it's plugged in one of these. And then here I have Samsung SmartThings V2, so the version two, so it's plugged into here. And then the other ports that are plugged into here are connections that are going to other devices. So I have my smart TV plugged directly into here, or I have my NAS storage plugged directly into here. And the list of devices just keeps going and going because you want to have the best internet connection at some of these locations. Now that we're doing a lot of 4K content, you want a good quality connection. Sometimes Wi-Fi is not the best and Wi-Fi can't always get to certain locations. Maybe if it's in the basement or maybe it's, it's behind a concrete wall, it's not going to get great Wi-Fi. So that is when you want to get a switch and then wire a ethernet cable to those different locations so that you can then plug them directly into here. So today I'm actually going to install a brand new switch. This is an eight port switch. So one of the ports is used for in, the other seven is used for out. But as you can see, I have some extra cables here. I want to route a few more things over uh, ethernet. So I'm going to upgrade my switch to a 16 port switch. Let's go ahead and swap this out and put in my new 16 port switch. All right, so here it is. This is a TP-Link 16 port gigabit 
desktop switch. Now I've been pretty impressed with my TP-Link switch in the past, so I think this will do the job. And this is definitely a business solution. You might not need this many um, ports at your house, but it is available if you want. So plug and play, that means there's no setup required. All we need to do is plug it into the internet, plug in our devices and they'll be ready to go. Has exquisite metal casing, wall mounting, green technology, traffic prioritization, and multicast optimization. And then down here, it will show you how it works. So we have the internet or our modem. We have a router. So here we have the Nest Wi-Fi router. And then we plug that directly into here. And then you can plug in your computer, your game console, your NAS, or your IPTV. And this will support up to a gigabit connection. So 1000 megabits per second and it can provide up to 32 gigabits per second non-block switching capacity. I don't know what any of that jargon means, but those are the specs. And here you can see a few more. It's 16 port by 10 by 100 by 1000 megabits per second. Uh, it has jumbo frame, fanless design, power LEDs. So the LEDs will be green if it's a gigabit port, and they'll be orange if it's only getting 100 megabits per second and their dimensions, and so on. So inside the box, we get a power cable. I didn't drop it. We get an installation guide. Down here, we have some feet. And here we have the switch. Now this feels really nice. It's built out of some really nice material. Here, we are going to mount it right there on the wall. So we're gonna plug the Nest Wi-Fi into the first port here, and then I'm gonna plug in the rest of the ethernet cables right into here, and you will see a little green icon indicating they are receiving internet when they're plugged in on the other end. And then over here on the back, you do have a secure lock option, and the power cable goes in right there. All right, so here we have the first item, which is our Nest Wi-Fi. And then we're just gonna go through and start plugging in all of our different ports. So now we have the router pushing the internet over here to the switch, and now everything that is plugged in here is going to get the internet. It has been a few days since I installed my new switch. I did some rearranging. Um, the way I had this oriented didn't actually fit on the screw holes properly, so I did put that on. A side note, I wish there were screws that came in the box, but there aren't. Um, so now I have everything plugged in up here, and you'll see at the top, all of the things that are connected are flashing a color. So the ones that are flashing orange, they're 100 megabit per second or less, and then the green ones are getting a gigabit per second connection. And down here you can see that some of them are not flashing, and that's because the other end has nothing plugged in. This is just for future expansion. I have some rooms where I have ethernet cables there, but nothing is plugged in currently on that side. And then over here, on the other end of this, I have a Chromecast Ultra plugged in, and I thought it was getting a gigabit per second connection, but it looks like it's not. I did plug in my computer over there, and this turned green, showing it was working properly and there's nothing wrong with the cable. But now you can see I have all of my different devices plugged directly in, and uh, so far it's working great. Now, you're probably asking why I have so many hubs. Well, that's gonna be another video for another day, but let's go ahead and check out to make sure that all of our hubs are working properly, check out the speeds of the internet, and see if everything is running fine over on the other side. Now here's a look at the end of those ethernet cables. So it's coming to this little port, I then have the ethernet cables plugged into there and then going to my different devices. So one of the examples is I have my Synology NAS storage here where I have two ethernet cables coming into here for the best speeds possible. So that takes up a few different devices. And then the next one is coming over here into my computer. So let's go into our Wi-Fi settings right here. You can see I still have my Wi-Fi points and I have my 65 different devices that are connected. So then if I open this up, it's gonna show us all the devices. So it's actually going to show all the devices connected over Wi-Fi. And then if we go down here, we can even see the different devices that are connected over the switch. So they're not just showing up as one switch, it's showing those devices as well. So now let's go and check something like our Philips Hue Hub. So here, if we go into the Philips Hue app, 
we're gonna head into the settings, and here you can see that our bridge is connected. Now it may say disconnected, and you might need to come and push the button, uh, but so far it's working great. Now if all of your devices are showing they're not connected, I would recommend rebooting the router after you have everything set up on the switch so that it can then see all of those different devices. Now let's do a speed test comparing Wi-Fi to plugged in over the ethernet. Now I'm using my laptop here because my desktop doesn't actually have a Wi-Fi connection. So I'm unplugged right now, just head to speedtest.net and let's go through the speed test. So my Wi-Fi speeds are actually pretty good. I pay for a one gigabit per second connection and right now I'm getting 240 megabits per second download. Now let's check the upload. In the upload, I only get 35 megabits per second upload, but let's see how it fares. So it's getting that max speed that it can get on the upload. So, so far, Wi-Fi has actually been okay. And here are the results. 11 millisecond ping, 261 megabits per second download, and 41 megabits per second upload. So let's go ahead, plug this in, and then see how it fares. And you'll know you're plugged in because down here, instead of it being a Wi-Fi connection, it will show a little computer with a connected icon. Just like that. And then you'll also see over here on my little adapter, it is flashing indicating that it is plugged in to the switch. So let's do a test again. And the speeds are much, much faster. So right now it's showing 700 to 750 megabits per second. So I'm getting what I actually pay for instead of half over Wi-Fi. I mean, that was pretty fast over Wi-Fi, but I might as well get the best speeds possible. And again, the upload, it's getting its max speed of 41 megabits per second. And the final results there are 11 milliseconds ping, 633 megabits per second download, and 41 megabits per second upload. So I'm very pleased with the results of being plugged in with the switch over ethernet versus just using Wi-Fi. Now, one of the other main reasons that I've upgraded the switch so that I have more items plugged in because pretty soon I'm going to be upgrading to fiber internet where I can get speeds of 1000 megabits per second download and upload and I do a lot of uploading here so I want to make sure that I have the best speeds possible. Now as soon as I can get fiber installed and I have the fiber modem all I will need to do to upgrade to it is unplug the ethernet cable from the current modem I have plug it into the fiber modem and all of my speeds will instantly increase and so I'm really excited for when that can happen and I've already done the work for my entire network beforehand. Now if you have any further questions about installing a switch to your network and have any other questions about adding ethernet to your different devices, please let me know in the comments below and if you want to see how I set up my Nest Wi-Fi, you can check out the video over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you on the next one.